You know, you, you brought up Sony, so I'll, I'll ask you one of the questions we had later on. Do you think that this deal will be as devastating for Sony as they're making it out to be? Because, you know, they're making it sound like it'll be basically the end of PlayStation if the deal goes through. I think everybody agrees that's just not true. What are your thoughts, though? How bad would this be? How bad, in quotes, I say, would this be for Sony if the Activision merger were to go through? To be fair, anybody who complains over a merger is going to paint doomsday scenarios and is going to exaggerate um, what will happen in the worst case. And, in this and case, to be fair, however, sorry to interrupt you. And to be fair, Microsoft has been doing that. They've been playing down their hand. And Sony has been, you know making themselves look to be very vulnerable when I think most people realize they're not. But anyway, continue. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, I mean, for example, Microsoft is known, I read about it in the media, I didn't discuss it with them ever, um, to also have opposed the acquisition of ARM, which designs uh, semiconductors, mm -hmm. um, which was a UK, um, which is a UK company um, by, by NVIDIA. Yep. And I don't know what arguments they made, but um, I'm sure they did not um, portray the consequences of the merger in the most optimistic way. So I, I, I think it's legit for Sony um, to overstate it within reason. The question is, have they gone beyond what is reasonable? Mm -hmm. And first, um, this, this whole notion that merger law, that antitrust law, a, a particular um, part of antitrust law here, should protect a market leader um, is in and of itself already at least counterintuitive. And then the question is, well, is there really a risk of Microsoft just because of their vast resources compared to Sony um, being able to just dominate consoles and cloud gaming and what have you um, because of this merger combined with um, whatever other resources they have, I, it just doesn't convince me because, um, of course, if you if you come from the assumption that all that Microsoft wants is to destroy Sony um, and to maybe, you know, sell consoles at huge losses and um, spend a whole lot of money on game development and then make incredibly um, uneconomical decisions, such as um, keeping a title like uh, uh, a, a Call of Duty kind of title exclusive to, to their own platforms or making it exclusive to their platforms, annoying huge numbers of customers who will then be angry at Microsoft not just with respect to games, even beyond, even you know, Windows, Office, um, Skype, Teams, they're going to hate it all. Um, and um, that Microsoft would do this, that they would make decisions that may, make no economic sense. Um, there was a study, an interesting paper that was published last fall by a um, Washington, D.C. organization, um, ITIF, which is like a tech industry um, um, advocacy group, but pretty broad based. So it's not just like, you know, Microsoft and, and its closest allies. Everybody is, is, is in there more or less. And it was written by a Qualcomm, uh, by a Qualcomm, um, a, a competition economist and expert. That study explained very well that it just wouldn't make sense for Microsoft economically uh, to make um, Call of Duty exclusive to its own uh, platforms. So that I think is, um, if I had to had to say what is the one thing about Sony that is really outrageous in all of this that I think just regulators just should reject, that is that Sony apparently, um, based on what I hear games industry journalists say about what Sony seems to tell them, that Sony is really not being constructive with a view to a, a licensing-based solution that they're not acting like NVIDIA, but that instead they're really looking for excuses to keep on fighting, to just keep on refusing to sit down and, 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 and work it out. That is the part that I think um, regulators should really at some point um, look at and say, hey, what are efforts they, are have they you really made? Yeah. Yeah. I Sorry, I talked over you. Yeah. You're... The thing you're trying to say, though, is why haven't you sat down to try to hash this out? Because they've just been lobbying and not really, you know, figuring out a solution. Is that what you were going to say? Sorry. 
Yeah, I mean, exactly. And, and some people, some people have already said it on the internet. I think there was a Forbes um, opinion piece uh, on the internet and some other the publication that said, well, Sony doesn't have to because at the end of the day, if Microsoft offers them a deal now, it's still going to have to do that after the deal um, has closed. But that is just where they are not being constructive. And the reason why I think um, uh, competition authorities should not be um, should not take that lightly is because it just results in complicated and bitterly contested and protracted merger review processes that could be resolved maybe many months before um, if everybody, as including every complaining party, was acting reasonably constructively. That is the part where I think they are unreasonable, that they overstate the, the consequences, that they um, do a lot of PR about this. Um, that I, I think is like more or less par for the course but now we are now this process has entered a different stage. Now it's really like the home stretch. The question is, what are we going to do from here on out? And I, I just don't understand why uh, why they're still uh, making it unnecessarily complicated for for the regulatory agencies and and ultimately for for the yeah for for the whole industry. I, I think my take on it is that Sony is doing all that for one reason to make things harder for Microsoft. If there's any chance that the deal does not go through, Sony's probably going to be a lot happier about not paying Microsoft about a billion dollars a year, <laughs> uh, you know, at, if the deal were to fall apart, right? That has to be it. Um, my theory is similar to yours. It's that both Sony and Google, and Google is not a vocal complainer like um, yeah. like Sony, but Google is also known to also have participated, that was reported in the media in that EU hearing, um, and um, I, I think what, what Sony and Google would prefer, of course, is for ABK, for Activision Blizzard King, to, to, to remain independent so that they can do their exclusive deals with them. Uh, Google paid $360 million to Activision Blizzard King. Um, it was a package deal that involved cloud services, YouTube advertising, all sorts of things. But as Epic Games alleges, and I'm with Epic on that side and not with my you know former friends at Blizzard, um, is, I think, very credible and plausible, Epic says it was all about dissuading um, dissuading ABK from pulling an Epic and also exploring different ways of getting those apps to, to consumers. And with Sony, I think it's similar. And you, you brought this up before, which really is this question of, well, what is the relationship going to be um, if, a, if the deal um, in a hypothetical scenario fell through? What would it be like? Mm -hmm. um, Emotionally, I'm quite sure that it would be very difficult, but Terse. all of these executives, yeah, all of these executives, of course, do have a, a duty to do what's best for the company. It's really about shareholders' money. So ultimately, they would still have to, to explore a way forward and put the past behind them. But um, I think that's really what Sony would like to do because Sony has a major competitive advantage here by virtue of its of its market share. It's a lot cheaper for Sony to do these exclusive deals because doing an exclusive deal means you have to compensate somebody. You have to disincentivize that somebody makes a game available on another platform. If your platform is already by, way, by far and away the largest, then the opportunity cost for the game maker such as ABK, um, from not offering content on, say, the Xbox is relatively small compared to doing it the other way around. And I think that's what, that's really what Sony would like to be able to do to deal with an, an independent Activision Blizzard King, um, not to necessarily make, um, make, um, Call of Duty a PlayStation exclusive title. Um, that might be their wet dream, but I think what they realistically think they can do are those deals where people get some goodies. They get some, uh, they make faster progress in the game. They get some special content, um, those feature exclusives, those special deals, um, and maybe also get some titles on a PlayStation exclusive basis, even though those titles would not have a Call of Duty kind of profile. Fair point. Last one I had for you about Sony was specifically about 
their arguments and why was so much weight given to their statements? We first saw what they said to the Brazil authorities because all those documents are largely open. And then that seemed to be reiterated to all the other jurisdictions. And a lot of times in the initial filing from the EU, from the CMA, from the FTC, it's what we saw Sony say in the past reiterated in in those documents. So why did Sony get so much consideration during these roadblocks that Microsoft has faced? Yeah, that's a very, very important um, aspect of this. What really is Sony's influence and also what's the limit of this? I think a lot of people out there um, have they they have a certain they are under a certain uh, misconception and they believe that Sony has sort of a veto right that if Sony rejects a proposal that Microsoft makes that means the proposal is not going to be a solution but that's not the way it works if they accepted it it would of course be very meaningful if they reject it then the regulators themselves have to decide whether the proposal is good enough and tell Sony look um, there is a solution that's available to you. Um, take it or leave it. Um, with a view to, um, yeah, like the, the, it's interesting you mentioned the, the Brazilian document because I thought that the Brazilian decision actually still, after with all of the additional information that has become available since, I still think that the Brazilian regulator got it right. Because first, they identified that this is a very fragmented market, games development, um, barriers to entry are relatively low. But the most important point that that regulator, uh, Katie, uh, made was that their job is to protect the competitive process and consumers as opposed to particular competitors. I know that the EU Commission understands this very well because there was a time when U.S. regulators when U.S. politicians accused the European Commission of focusing on competitors' complaints as opposed to what it ultimately means for consumers. That was really a narrative that the EU, that the EU's competition law and the way it was applied was very much about protecting competitors rather than competition. And now it's, it could end up being the other way around with the FTC protecting a competitor, trying to protect a competitor. They're not going to, they're not going to win in U.S. court. I cannot imagine that. They, they recently just lost in that meta within, um, case yep. and, and, and that was re- actually a stronger case than this one, relatively speaking. Um, but, um, that's the situation we have. So the regulators saw You've got Microsoft and they see the sheer size of the organization. Obviously, Microsoft being fundamentally different from Apple and Google because first, I mean, Microsoft antitrust issues, they were about 20 years ago and they settled. They settled with the EU. They worked it out and they didn't exhaust all appeals. The ones that the EU is dealing with now, like Apple and Google, they are hellbent to exhaust all appeals. And not just that, I mean, also that they don't really comply with the orders until they get fined, all of that. Microsoft has, uh, for, for well over a decade, been extremely cooperative. Nevertheless, it is one of the biggest tech companies um, in the world. However, the problem is then that is not per se a legal criterion. If I, I, I said it on Twitter recently that if Saudi Aramco, the, the Saudi oil company, which has pretty much the same market cap as Microsoft, if they were to acquire Activision Blizzard, would the fact that they are worth $1.8 trillion on the stock market, would that have any bearing on the case? It obviously wouldn't. So they were all like looking for something. And then Sony volunteered, Sony Mm -hmm. volunteered those theories, um, uh, some of which are are really absurd. And then there are others where you say, well, um, they're not really strong and they lack the, they don't have the facts to back this up. But the, the, the regulators needed to take it seriously. It was a question of due diligence. It was about let's not just wave this through. There's this term under enforcement. It's that people say that in the past, um, regulators on both sides of the Atlantic and even in other parts of the world may have just been too permissive. 
with a view to mergers. They may have just allowed a lot of mergers to be consummated, a lot of deals to be closed that they should have blocked because they led to market concentration or especially to, uh, to an incredible concentration of power. And that, I think, is this climate. I would say Sony, Sony's executives, Jim Ryan, those people, they've probably been reasonably effective, but it's not like anything that they've done here has been spectacular. What they benefited from was this overall big tech skeptical climate. Hmm. You know, I never thought about it that way. Sony set the basis for the regulators to create arguments to take a closer look at the the complaint. I mean, that's a that's a really interesting perspective. I hadn't thought about it that way before. Uh, that's actually all I think I have time for right now before the baby needs me. <laughs> uh, I really want to say thank you for making the time to, you know, sit and chat with me about this this whole deal. I, it's been incredibly interesting and it's been great talking with you this evening. Thanks for having me, Destin, and have a great evening and we'll be in touch. You too. All right. Bye. That's it for today. If you've watched all the way to the end, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hitting that bell to help the channel grow. Thank you so much for helping us reach 100,000 subscribers. Now, if you're a member, thank you so much for supporting the channel. The full video is available to members right now, and we will do individual videos from segments of this interview. If you want to become a member and watch it right now, you click that join button. It'll be ad free, as are all my videos. Be sure to check out this video over here where uh, the FTC actually talked about how they're mostly siding with Microsoft on that individual case. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.